a lot of the day talking about campaigns that we've seen scale in the United States that public has been involved in, and also about campaigns that have scaled globally, from campaigns like the Autocomplete Truth to campaigns about water and other UN priorities. You've heard so much, but at the heart of public, we try to take any campaign that has a very social, social impact um, agenda and amplify it. But as individuals, we can also be amplifiers of social causes that matter to us. We're each lightning rods for the people who follow us, for the people that we know in the real physical world in addition to in the online world. And there are no two better people positioned to speak about what we can each do individually to brand ourselves and to be a lightning rod and amplifier for the causes we care about around the world and not just in this country than the two people on the stage here. We have Sergio Fernandez de Cordova, who is the co-founder of Public, alongside Antonio and myself. And actually, we are very pleased to have a Public Board member, uh, His Highness Fahad al Saud from Saudi Arabia. And if you don't follow him on social media, I suggest that you do or that you will in 15 minutes' time. <laughs> There we go. So we're going to get into, uh, we're going to dive right into it because I know it's the end of the day. And, uh, and Fahad, we want you to really kind of, you know, give us a little bit of your experience. And um, as, as, you know, Rachel was mentioning, we've heard amazing things about you and your company in New York recently. Um, as you were telling me earlier outside, you had a lot, of, a lot of the media, you know, really wanting to twist your story around a little bit and have some fun with it. And, uh, you know, why don't you actually tell us and give us a little behind the scenes, what have you been up to? And, and Explain, give us a little background of your business. Um, so, assalamu alaikum. Um, I just wanted to, to kind of uh, give you a little background about myself. So before I started my company, New Arab Media, um, I was in charge of Arabic and introducing the internal department of Arabic within Facebook. So the concept, and I was with Facebook since 2008, so the, the, the exposure to narrative online, to utilization of, of these social platforms has been a huge part of my kind of um, career, uh, which landed me this, this great opportunity to, to join Sergio and this initiative to kind of push what has become my, now my passion. Um, how do we create and utilize this digital platform that, um, uh, let's, let's go back a little bit. Let's look um, at uh, what this digital platform actually means here. Here in, in, in the US specifically, the digital platform that, you know, whether it's like Twitter, Instagram, and so on, are an extension of existing infrastructure. So uh, there's right now this, this, this uh, wanting to understand this new, um, uh, addition to an existing infrastructure that has been working for so long. Um, and that's where, why we're here and having these questions. But we need to also take a step back and realize that this infrastructure, this digital infrastructure, has serviced a lot of developing countries and you know, other countries, maybe even developed around the world, where this industry doesn't exist. For example, in Saudi Arabia, theaters don't exist, but now people are making movies on YouTube. Uh, it's a legit legitimate career move. They are, um, these are studios, these are channels, these are executives, artists, management. Um, so what I decided to do in realizing this opportunity um, and how much uh, social media and this platform actually has impacted my region, I decided to uh, focus on communicating messaging through art and narrative and diverse stories that kind of fight what I wanted to disrupt is the single story narrative kind of affecting my region. And through games and um, animation, I found it's the best way to be able to bypass a lot of, um, uh, I guess, fears and, 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 and uh, misconceptions and kind of uh, uh, these obstacles and walls that some people find, you know, don't trust information that's coming to them. So with, we uh, had the privilege of being part of uh, Games for Change, which is creating content and games for social impact. Um, and um, as well as uh, uh, being awarded, um, um, uh, given an award at Tribeca for um, during the Disruptive Innovation Awards. So um, to kind of go back to what we're doing here, we need to understand that these tools in a lot of these countries uh, have provided um, a direct link be between the individual, their, their opinions, what they want to do, how they feel, what they like to eat to the rest of the world. What we need to also 
um, really focus on social impact. The social impacts happen uh, happens, I think, when the individual themselves goes through a change or has a mandate or a clear mission to create this 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 change, and the change has to come with oneself first. So, um, from my perspective, is we need to create this direct link between getting to know ourselves, getting to uh, best to figure out to how to verbalize our opinions, what it is we want to, you know, get to the rest of the world, and um, do it in a way that's strategic. Because whether it's 60,000, 16 million, or 300 people that are following you, these are real people. And these people have, you know, you have the opportunity to speak to them, to have an impact that would then create um, a, a social change, and, that, and that's your way. Um, of actually contributing to the world because we are here as organizations, but organizations are made out of people. So we need to bring it back to the people, I guess. So why don't, why don't you tell us and tell the audience why, why games? Why choose games as an outlet for disrupting uh, global narratives in your region? Why, 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 is your, why are games so special in your region? Um, games are, are on different levels um, are um, a, a creative way to transfer information and to engage with one's, um, um, you know, we try to create games that actually challenge you on an intellectual level, introduce new stories, new narratives, um, and representation. People need to understand that this digital platform is an opportunity for them to create an industry. It's, uh, it's uh, feasible for them to actually uh, see themselves in an authentic, uh, non-corrupted uh, way, I guess. Um, and it's just fun. Uh, the University of Helsinki, um, has, uh, which we work with, has um, a huge mandate on kind of bringing together education um, and uh, you know, how to transfer academic information and the gamification of, of that. And on all levels, from smart schools, when you know, kindergarten, all the way to PhD programs. Tell us a little bit more on, on um, you know, social impact in gaming. Social impact in gaming, it's, um, it's, well, it's real. Otherwise, Games for Change wouldn't have been around for 12, 13 years. Uh, Games for Change Europe wouldn't have been around. And it's, this is not a plug. It's just to understand that there are existing institutions and, and resources that this dialogue, they need to be part of this dialogue. We all need to be part of this dialogue because they have a lot of uh, data on how actual social changes happen. In my case, our content is still young. We do have uh, uh, nine pieces of content out. Um, but the social change was in the, you know, I have 25 people spanning between uh, uh, Copenhagen and, um, and Jordan, uh, Amman, Jordan, and representing 16 different countries, maybe like the UN, um, in a sense. But it was the collaborative effort, the culture that was built on a shared passion of empowering a region that was changed because people were coming from all different backgrounds from as far, you know, from Denmark to Poland to Iraq, uh, Iran, and um, the US, um, just to, to name a few. So what's your advice uh, for those who can access the, um, you know, social media in your region and utilize it for social impact and uh, as well as you have, how are you sort of perpetuating that? Well, it's the narrative. We are all story uh, tellers. We all have that ability. And if you don't, now you have the tools to do so. What is your story? Um, finding that, investing in that, um, you can capitalize off of it and by either trying to profit by creating a brand or a business in the sense of self-branding. Your opinion matters. We tell that to everyone. We tell that to our kids. And now we have the platform that actually can convey that, but yet we don't understand how to send a message across um, and the power that that message has. Um, and I don't think we need to be uh, creating any, um, I call it aggressive positivity. Um, uh, you, you know, invest in, in finding what makes you happy, what makes you kind of feel connected and, uh, to the world, invest in empathy, in getting to know the other, and then from there, utilize these tools and figure out a concise way in a, uh, to communicate what, you, what your hope is for the world or your region or your environment or even your family and yourself. So just, um, we're, we're running a little bit out of time, but I want to get into just a couple more things. And, and how can media houses here um, in the U.S., when you start to look at, you know, between the U.S. and the Middle East, um, you know, sort of bridge the social impact and gamification and all that you're seeing sort of from the ground up and, and, and given your background in the region, 
um, how can organizations here learn, implement, as well as vice versa? Social media was created to disrupt these organizations. That's something that's been very clear, and trying to control something that was created to disrupt you is, is just a waste of time. The, you need to change the approach to it and, re, and, and respect it as a legitimate platform and then engage with it as such. Um, you know, that means a lot of business plans have to change, a lot of relationships have to change, uh, but also that puts a lot of pressure in the filtration and organization of the content that exists. It's great that people are celebrated based on um, uh, clicks or what views, but what are they saying? It's a discussion needs to happen about organiz uh, organizing um, uh, thought, um, uh, allowing it to kind of float to the top and what needs to actually be said, and then figure out with you um, how to create a collaborative relationship um, where you both benefit, because it's, they're not here to replace you, but they're here to change the way messaging and information is, is distributed. So it's nice to pay attention. Thank you very much. So we're, um, since we actually have a couple of minutes left, we're going to actually open the floor up, and we haven't really uh, had, uh, outside of the, the, the workshop sessions, audience participation. So we have uh, time for two questions. Not you, sir. <laughs> questions? I was talking to Amir. Could I? Yeah, just press the button, please. <clears throat> Oh. Identify yourself, please. I am Kunal Sood. Um, I have many hats, but uh, right now I'm the founder of XFellows and uh, I serve as the executive director for strategic relations at Halo Drop, which is life saving drones. So that's one second about me. Uh, my question, Fahad, we know each other. Good to see you again. Um, is you know, some of us in the room have privilege, right? And you're right, we are all stories. How do we take our story? and make it so that we become exponential agents of impact? How do we unlock exponential potential in others? Because that's something I've seen which is difficult with social media, given that it's now becoming a sluggish space. How do we cut through all the noise and really use social impact for impact? I mean, social media for impact. So one of the biggest problems is we need to recognize the power of consumerism, right? So by, by, by looking at people as consumers and, and sending things and, and kind of deciding what they need to be, who they need to be, so they can relate to these products that are being pushed at them. We've done this for so long where the, to the point where we have generations that have no clue who they are, but define themselves by content and by things and products. So there needs to be a discussion and an investment, and again, shedding all these layers, understanding what are your thoughts, what are your kind of abilities, what, are, what is your hope. Once that's organized, utilize your blessings. We all have different opportunities in life and challenges, and some of us, like myself, was given an, an, an opportunity to be positioned in a very strategic point in time within my culture and where I come from, but uh, so did thousands of others. Um, the difference is understanding what it is you have around you that you can actually utilize to build off of. Um, travel, it's investing in self, it's as simple as that because once you know who you are, you know exactly what you wanna say. And creativity, be creative in how you communicate. Don't push your, 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 um, your content out there to people just because you feel you're right. Build a dialogue with them. Uh, invest in understanding who's listening to you, what interests them about, about you, and, um, and, and, and that it's, this is a journey that you both have to take. So it's, it's a lot of self-development. I know it sounds um, sometimes, you know, it's, it's easy in theory, but it's very difficult to apply, and that, that's where the person, because if you really want social change, you'll invest in changing yourself. And if that's too much for you, then you just sit back and like my pictures. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> One last question, then we're gonna get into the next part of, uh, of, of our evening. Thank you, Sergio and Rachel. I, salam alaikum, Ibrahim. I want to make a short comment, which I want your idea on. The world is watching Nepal in a state of disaster, and we didn't hear it mentioned today, but I think as 
compassionate human beings that have the influence to make real change, don't you think that collectively we should do something? There's a gaping hole. What can we collectively actionable now use our social influence to save lives and give dignity and rebuilding hope to those in Nepal? Thank you. Um, I think that's actually, uh, that's actually a very important question to bring up because a friend of mine actually passed in Nepal. He was at base camp, Dan. Um, and so this is close to home. Um, I didn't even know about Nepal until like three days later. Uh, and I'm on social media 24. And the only way I, I knew about it is because I had a personal connection to it. Um, so we comes back. We've, the thing is, we don't. Un, uh, I wrote a piece called um, "Selective Humanitarianism," uh, basically hashtag Look, I'm helping. And the concept behind that was uh, in a response to kind of what we saw happen with the ALS and, and and with Gaza and all these campaigns. Is that again, these voices matter. These voices have weight. Uh, but they're not organized. We are, it's a trend-driven, again, consumers. It's, they don't understand the power of the platforms they have because um, it's, it's, it's still, it still connects, but it disconnects at the same time. Um, we need to be aware that it doesn't matter where a conflict happens, is that the world needs to know right away. And I think right now a lot of the messaging happens is that this Nepal is just not important enough for the people that are online that are tweeting about Justin Bieber. So how do you get that? How do you educate them? How do you filter and, and, and introduce counter content? Um, speak about these issues, asking questions about them, but I, we're not helpless. We're not helpless. There's a lot of tools out there. We just don't understand them. Um, and the companies that are producing these, content, these tools and platforms don't necessarily communicate it to us because they don't even know how it's going to be used. Nobody even knows what, why Twitter even exists. So. Um, so it's about, you know, you have, you're, you're passionate about it, you've personally, you know, I know you for, for, for a couple years, so you've built a, a following, communicate that, figure out how to, how to, how to, how to message that, in a, how to package that in a great, uh, simple package that can be consumed in 15 seconds or in three seconds by looking at it, in addition to text. So it's, it's, a, it's an art form that needs to be developed. Thank you very much, Fahad. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you, everyone. I want to thank both Sergio and Farhad, not just for sharing their words today, but for their leadership with public. Uh, it's through our board and our founders that we're able to do the work that we do to get great media for great causes.